Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and I'm so excited and honored to have Vera Jimenez as my guest today. Vera is a meteorologist at KTLA 5 News, the co-owner of the Hermosa Beach Fish Shop with her husband, Brian, and her and her husband are both real estate investors. As a meteorologist, Vera has won three Emmys and three Golden Mics, among other awards. Her restaurant, The Fish Shop, has won several awards and most recently was awarded Best of the Beach for seafood, specialty salad, fish and chips, and stews and chowders. Vera is very active in the South Bay community through the Redondo Beach Rotary, the Hermosa Beach Women's Club, and she's a member of the Chambers of Commerce in Redondo Beach and Hermosa Beach. When she's not working or volunteering, she spends time practicing physical and mental fitness through various forms of exercise and meditation. Welcome to the podcast, Vera. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love what you do. Well, thank you. Well, I always love chatting with you, Vera, because we both have a lot in common, love being part of our communities, supporting other women in business, and enjoying healthy, delicious seafood when we're not working on our fitness goals. Could you share with us, I mean, I read your bio, you have a very full, full schedule. How do you find the time to fit in those things that are important working on practicing, you know, your physical and mental fitness? Uh, You know, I make that a priority. And the way I do that is I try to get it done first thing in the morning. Mm. So I roll out of bed and I hit the gym. And then when I get back, I do my meditation uh, and then the rest of my day happens every once in a while. Um, actually, you know, not more than more than once in a while. Um, I, I am at a point where I'm just like on a time crunch and I schedule an appointment that has to be at a certain time. And sometimes that will, you know, interfere with my meditation, but I try to pick it up on a different part of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, it, meditation is something that I just started doing um, recently, a few months back. And mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wish I could say, oh, yeah, I'm already feeling the benefits of it. But um, it, it's a slow process. And there are days when I go, oh, okay, today, I can feel that this came from, you know, thinking about it and meditation. And then, you know, I won't, it, it won't come to me for a few days or, or a few weeks. And then like, all of a sudden, I go, oh, my gosh, I totally like can feel this that that this came to me from meditating and, you know, and it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a process and it's a learning thing. And I think for me, what I'm trying to realize is that I've been physically active my entire life. Mm. I started running when I was a kid. Well, I was like in junior high when I started running. And while I don't do that anymore, my workouts have evolved, Mm -hmm. but working out is about, you know, muscle memory and it's about moving the muscles. And what many of us forget, including myself, that I'm learning now, is that your brain is another muscle Mm. and you have to train it. And so that is part of what, for me, is meditation. It's training my brain to stop when I need to stop it and focus on what I'm doing, whether it's my physical training or whether it's working and concentrating, whether it's reading something and my mind drifts off and I've got to pull it back in and focus on the page, whatever it is, I'm learning that it's just muscle memory. And my brain is just one more muscle that I have to train. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, you know, I don't have a, a meditation practice, but it, it keeps that whole idea keeps coming up in, in my life, you know, a, a lot recently. So I'm, it's really cool that you, that you share that. And I guess, how did you get into having that be a focus more recently? Could you share that in just maybe some ways that you're able to incorporate that? Because I think a lot of people are probably like me and not and not really doing that just yet, but maybe want to. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's interesting that you ask. Um, I, I was very much like you, where I, where I 
didn't have time. And for about the last four years, it's just a matter of like changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. And now instead of telling myself that I don't have enough time to do this or I don't have enough time to do that, I started to change my vocabulary saying, um, I didn't make time to do this. Mm -hmm. And so in that practice, I just started reading. I listened to a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, And, you know, when I can, I read blogs because I don't sit a lot and read. So a lot of what I do is books on audio because I drive, I commute to work Mm -hmm. and my drive is long. I do a lot of books on tape or, you know, uh, even on YouTube, you can get books on tape or you can get, um, you know, podcasts on YouTube or it's pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I just started realizing that, you know, a lot of the people that I follow or a lot of the people that I look to for reading material and just to see how they got to where they got. One of the things that they have in practice in common is their meditation practice. Mm. And it was really funny because when I decided to finally do this, um, Tim Ferriss, who I I follow and I listen to, Mm -hmm. said, if you don't think that you have time to meditate or if you don't have time to meditate right now, you're exactly the person that needs to be meditating. Mm. And for some reason that really hit home. And so I just try to be more judicious in terms of like planning my day and scheduling my calendar Mm. to make sure that I have time to take care of myself physically and mentally. That fitness to me has now become really important. And I don't think of it as, you know, um, meditating as a part, like, I think of it as that's just part of my physical fitness because mm-hmm. in meditating, it doesn't just help me focus in my work and the business, but it also helps me focus when I am exercising. You know, I used to be able to do 80 double unders in a row. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I've got some sort of mental block that right now on a good day, I can do 20 to 25. And mm-hmm. I can't figure out what, what that mental block is about. But it doesn't matter. I'm not going to focus on the mental block. I'm going to focus on. Hi, friends. It's Catherine. And if you're joining us and only have time for that out and back 15 minute walk, that was your halfway point reminder. You want to turn around now. All right. Back to Vera. How do I make it so that I can go back to doing 80 double unders in a row? So part of that, I'm trying to incorporate this meditation Mm. into the physical practice. So if you make it a priority and it's something that you really care about, you figure out a way to make it work. And if it's not working in your life right now, it just means that you're, you may not be ready. Like subconsciously, you may not be ready to start that mm. practice yet. Yeah. And when you're ready, you're like, when you are ready, you will say, this is what I'm going to do. This is now a priority. And that's just that. Just like eating healthy, you know, being judicious about what I put in my body, being mindful about my exercise and my fitness, the meditation will follow as well. I love that. And I have to give you a a book recommendation now. I don't know if you've read Dina Castor's memoir that recently came out. No, I haven't. She, it's, it's, it's basically what you're talking about. It'll, a lot of the focus is kind of her journey. So it is her memoir from her running journey, but also just uh, the focus of the mind and how the power of positive thinking really helped her. But it, it's really a great read for anyone. But I think as a runner, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy that. And, and it really ties into what you're talking about because the mind really is so powerful. It is. And the unfortunate thing is that most experts say, and again, I'm not an expert. I'm just quoting what I've read. Mm-hmm. Um, is that most of us only use about 10% of our brain. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've heard that too. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, so I guess maybe touch a little bit. So you, you have kind of hinted at, and I just reminded myself from the running comment there that your journey has progressed, the types of fitness that you focus on and, and all that has progressed over your, the course of your life. Could you speak to that a little bit and just talk about just 
different journeys and how, you know, even though you've been active for, for most of your life, how that's changed and why that's changed and just to kind of give some insights to listeners who might be in the same boat and need a little help? Sure. Um, I think the most important thing, you know, I'm 45 years old and the most important thing that I have learned in, you know, in, in the journey is that it's not one size fits all. You have to understand what works for your body and what doesn't. Mm. And you have to stay interested. So I started off as a runner and I loved running. And I finally had to stop running in my, I want to say maybe like my mid thirties, like 34, 35, Mm -hmm. um, just from injuries and a lot of pain. But it was something that I was so used to. I was so used to that adrenaline rush that um, I I wasn't willing to let it go until I really had a severe injury and then I had to let it go. Then from there, I started swimming because swimming is a really great form of exercise that, you know, I didn't realize that I didn't know how to swim. But when I was training to do a triathlon, I was at a triathlon clinic Mm -hmm. and some, one of the coaches like across the pool yelled at me and said, you, and I'm like, Uh what? I kept looking over my shoulder, no, no, you. And then Fox is like, me? I was a pool. And I'm like, well, what did I do? I'm like, I didn't be in the water. Why am I getting pulled out? And so he's like, you don't know how to swim, and you're about to do a triathlon in the Pacific Ocean. You need to take some swimming lessons, or you're going to drown out there. I was 30, 34 years old. I was 33, as a matter of fact. I was 32 or 33. And I thought I knew how to swim. And my entire life, I thought, oh, you know, I can swim. I can swim. So just learning how to swim was like a whole new challenge. Mm. So I tripped for a little while, and then I did the cycling. uh, But I was hit twice on my bike. And then finally, my sister said, you need to not do that on the streets. Because, you know, meteorologists. I get paid to be on TV Mm -hmm. and she said, you know, if you end up in an accident and you like, like mess with your face a lot, you may lose your livelihood. And it wasn't a vanity thing. It was just like, that's how I make my living. Right. 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 I, you know, it's not about, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm not going to be a pretty girl or whatever. Right. It, It wasn't about that. It was just about, you know, People turn the TV on, and if they don't like the way you look, they don't even take two seconds to listen to what you have to say. Right. They just right, change it. Right. And that's just, it's, it's not a judgment. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just the way it is. So I was like, okay, maybe the cycling on the road isn't a good idea. So I stopped doing that, and then I took up, you know, this program that I've been doing now for a while. Then I just went back to the gym and was just doing, like, you know, boot boot classes and Zumba and, you Mm -hmm. know, hip hop and jazz, you know, all of that dancey stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have a difficult time with coordination. (laughs) So I didn't get a lot of joy out of those classes. I got a lot of frustration. So I figured out that even though those classes sound like a lot of fun, they're not for me. Mm -hmm. And so I stopped doing that. And now I do a, you know, I, I do a lot of like calisthenics. The class that I take is a you know, you do push-ups and sit-ups and squats and lunges and pull-ups and rowing and jump roping and running, you know, short distances and sprints and things like that. So that's kind of where I am now, but I'm starting to incorporate more yoga and I've incorporated yoga in and out of my practice Mm. for years and years and years. But again, because of, you know, that whole slowing down uh, like mentally, I wasn't ready for it, mm-hmm. but now I am more mentally ready for yoga. And so now I've started to incorporate more yoga into my practice. Not as much as I would like, mm. but, but, it, but, but more. Now I'm, I'm mentally making, like, I need to get to at least one yoga class. I need to get to at least one yoga class. I need to get to at least one yoga class per week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I love that. And I've, I've had a similar experience with yoga because I, I did not, <laughs> I could not stand it when I was, you know, in, in my, just out of college and, you know, yeah. really just a runner and kind of adding some things in because I'm, I'm a personal trainer. So I know those other things are important, but then I had a running injury and, you know, 
really couldn't do much else. And I realized how important it really is for my mental health as well. You know, I mean, that's probably why I do need to add meditation myself because I think the yoga helps, but, um, yeah. you know, it's interesting how, how things can change and, and progress and find us when we're ready and, and be part of our life journey as well. Right. I think the most important thing is to stay open, mm. to stay, you know, um, mentally open for the possibilities because you never know what's going to click. You, you have no idea what's, what's going to click. You know, the mindset of a lot of women say, oh, you know, I don't like to do weights because I don't want to get bulky. Right. Well, <laughs> before you get bulky, you have to get lean. Mm -hmm. As women, we don't tend to bulk up. There are some women that are exceptions that are just genetically big muscled. Mm -hmm. I, I know it because I work out with women like that. But most of us aren't built that way because women aren't normally built that way mm -hmm. unless, you know, it's in their genes. In order to bulk up, in order for me to bulk up, I have to consciously take a lot of protein. Otherwise, you know, I will just lean down because muscles burn more fat than fat. Mm -hmm. And so before you bulk up, you burn fat. And so you get lean. And if you are going to bulk up, you're having to do so much weight that you're tearing your muscles, you're developing them that scar tissue to bulk up that muscle. So it takes a ton of work so that, you know, that whole, oh, I don't want to lift weights because I'm a woman and I don't want to get bulky. Uh-uh. And that's, <laughs> that's a myth. That, that, that's a myth for about, I would say, you know, most of us. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I'm not a personal trainer. I can just tell you, based on what I've read and based on, based on what I see at the gym, whether it's, my personal small class, whether it's a 24 hour fitness, whether it's valleys, whether it's yoga, whether it's Pilates, whatever it may be, unless you're, you know, you can speak to that more than I can yeah. because you are a physical trainer. Yeah, no, and, and you're absolutely right. And I'm, I'm glad that, that you share that and people can, you know, look at your picture and see that you haven't bulked up, even though you've incorporated <laughs> weights in, uh, in no. your training, right? So, yep. And, and and I do, you know, like I, I can squat, you know, when I'm not injured on a good day, I can squat like down to the ground, like mm -hmm. not a half squat, like, you know, when they talk about ass to the grass, that <laughs> kind of squat with about 120 on a good day. Mm -hmm. I can do pull-ups unassisted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I can, and, and I, you know, I'm not a particularly big girl. I, you know, I weigh 115, I'm five foot three. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, you know, it takes a lot. And the only reason why I have as much muscle as I have and I don't have that much is because I add an extra 30 grams of powder protein to my diet fairly regularly. Maybe not every day, but fairly regularly. Sure, sure. So again, it takes a lot to, to get, to get muscular. Right. No, for sure. Not, and I appreciate you sharing that because it is really important to include strength training in our, in our routines. And we've, we've talked about like the cardio part and then the, yeah. the flexibility through the yoga, but yeah, it's really important. And it's, I appreciate you sharing that to help other women listening that, you know, it's actually, it's not that, not that bad to add in some strength training could actually be really good. <laughs> no, it's really good for you. So you mentioned, you know, uh, we've talked a little bit about the importance of what you eat for, for you and your goals. And one of my favorite places here in the South Bay is definitely hands down the Hermosa Beach Fish Shop. So could you just share with us a little bit about that with our listeners since you and your husband are the co-owners and what we might be able to find there to support our, our health goals from what we're putting into our body? Yeah, absolutely. We have fresh seafood. We make everything from scratch. Um, it's for us, it's a, it's a labor of love. We mm -hmm. love it. Um, and what I love about it is, is that you can have super healthy meals or you can indulge. I mean, yeah. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, we have fish and chips. We have mm -hmm. the best fish and chips in the South Bay. It was voted by the South Bay residents. Mm -hmm. And so if you want something naughty, like fried fish, <laughs> knock yourself out. Um, but if you don't, you don't have to have it. You can have grilled fish. We have, um, uh, you know, vegetables that we blanch and then we saute them in an oil infused fusion that we make with mm -hmm. like herbs. Uh, if you want clam chowder in a bread bowl on a cold day and you want something like 
super like, uh, you know, comforty food, you can have that. But if you want like a lean stew on a cold day, we make a fish shop stew. That's won like three awards mm. and that we buy the fish bones from our distributor. We make a stock. So it's not, you're not drinking water. You're, you're drinking bone broth mm. basically is what it is because we make that broth with the fish bones and then we build it from there. It doesn't have any dairy. It's got veggies in it. It's got, you know, fish. That's awesome. I did not know about that. Oh yeah. That's, it's the best. It's so good and it's so tasty. Mm. Uh, people love that. So there's that, the specialty salad. Our salads are really big. It's baby green. So it's got a lot of those dark leafy baby lettuces. It's not mm. iceberg. Mm -hmm. It's good dark leafy stuff. There's no kale in it because a lot of people don't like kale. You either <laughs> love kale or you hate it. There's no kale in it. Um, but it does have all those dark, uh, which is what we want in our diets, those dark baby leafy greens. We do pickled red onions that we take care of in-house. We add capers, you know, cherry tomatoes. Um, cucumbers, and then you get your choice of salad dressing. As I mentioned, all the salad dressings are made from scratch. Here's the other thing that I love. Like we do fish and chips and we do shrimp and chips. Well, if you're having one of those days, like on the weekends, I like to cheat. But <laughs> I'm not a, like a, a cheat day. Here's what a cheat day it is for me. Mm -hmm. I want the shrimp and chips but I'm not going to do the fried shrimp. I'm going to have the French fries because I want something fried, but I'm going to have them grill the shrimp. Mm -hmm. I can have them grill the shrimp. If you want to do the cod, which I love cod. It's one of my favorite fishes. It's sustainable because it's not overfished and it's mm -hmm. good protein and it's low in fat mm -hmm. compared to like something like salmon. Sure. I love the cod. You can have grilled cod instead of having it fried and you can have the, the french fries for me that's a cheat meal mm -hmm. and i love it and i love it um so you can you can eat, you know it's one of those fast casual premium restaurants you go to the counter you order what you want you can have it your way mm -hmm. we have steamed rice jasmine rice we have six grain rice we have um shrimp we have scallops. If you're a vegetarian, we have vegetarian tacos. If you're a vegan, you can have the jasmine rice. You can have the seaweed salad, which is to die for. And you can have, um, you know, the vegetables or the salad or um, let's see, with the macaroni salad, you can't have because that has mayonnaise and that would not be vegan. But you can't mm. have the coleslaw because we use a poppy seed vinaigrette on the coleslaw. Got it. So, Whatever your dietary needs are, whatever your palate preferences are, we can take care of. And we also have healthy meals for your dog. We we'll, we have a dog bowl because we have a dog friendly patio. Mm -hmm. We have a dog bowl that's steamed fish, steamed vegetables, and steamed rice. And the last day of the the last Wednesday of the month, your dog eats free when you come in for lunch or dinner. I love that. No, I, I, my husband and I are huge fans. Like our, our favorite is the, I don't, I almost like don't want to say this because sometimes we have to go a little later on a Thursday and I don't want them to sell out, but I love, absolutely love the, your, your $1 oyster nights and you know, yeah. it's fun to have the variety. Like we kind of, we do like, we have, we order our oysters and we get three of each and then we do like a little draft at the end to see like who, you know, we get to pick like our own, <laughs> who picks the, yeah. the the different ones and that's always fun and then I do love like you mentioned it's so customizable so that's one of my go-to places where I have when we have friends or family in town and like some people want to eat healthy some people want to indulge people are picky it's like just go to the fish shop and it, and it will satisfy anyone <laughs> so yeah exactly exactly and it's a, and if you have kids we also have kids bowls because we also have like you know, the kids' bowls are like, you know, fish, vegetables, and rice, or the salad, or, you know, um, the kids' plate is, you know, it's it's what you order, but it's a smaller portion. And then you have kids that don't like seafood. We have, like, grilled cheese sandwiches, but it fits our Blue Zones uh, project, so we do a little bit less cheese. We don't do all the heavy butter. So mm -hmm. we try to keep it so that the kids will eat it without making it, like, heavy calorically or or very fatty. Oh, that's awesome. I really appreciate the insights into all these little little side things I didn't realize about the fish shop, too. <laughs> well, it's awesome. I, it's, I love it. And we don't have a corkage, but you can bring your own wine. Love that. <laughs>
Awesome, Vera. Well, I really appreciate you being a guest on the show and sharing kind of little insights in your into your own journey and things you're working on and how they've benefited you and, and where we can get some healthy meals in the South Bay that are also delicious. And um, yeah, no, it's been it's been fun. Thank you so much for being a guest. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you around town. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine. I hope you enjoyed this episode and Vera's insights. I know I did. And I learned about a few things I need to try at the fish shop, like that fish stew, which sounds amazing. And the next time it's a June gloomy day and I'm feeling sorry for myself, even though I live in the beautiful South Bay where it's usually sunny, I'm definitely going to go head on over and enjoy some of that. So wanted to just pop on quickly because there's two things happening today that you want to know about. One is that it is the last day to enter the giveaway for Mia Moran's copy of her flow planner. So if you're struggling to fit your business, fitness, and life goals, and all of that good stuff, spirituality, so meditation practice, if you're like Vera and have that already, or if you're like me and do need help scheduling it, you will love this planner. It's going to help you out so much, and you can win a copy if you go to the show notes from Mia's episode. So check that out by going to our general show notes, fitarmadillo.com slash podcast, and then finding Mia's episode. Another exciting thing for the parents or just people who have kids in their life that they want to inspire to get moving is that Marathon Kids has a great program, free promotional program that's going on, a walk and talk challenge that starts today, June 1st, 2018. So head on over to the show notes for that episode to get involved with that. And then finally, we're heading into the weekend and next week is going to be Global Running Day on June 6th, 2018. And I have been asking some of my fans, friends, and listeners to share about what running means to them and their running experiences. So if you didn't get to do that yet, you can send me an email to podcast at fitarmadillo.com. Share anything that you would like. If it's going to be longer than a minute for me to read, I'm happy to have you on the podcast as a guest. So we can definitely do that. And if you would like to share this information in audio form, you can definitely send me an audio file. And if you have trouble with that, let me know and I can give you some options for that. So excited about the weekend, excited about celebrating Global Running Day with you next week. And for all the fun things that are happening June 1st, if you subscribe to the podcast, I will chat with you on Monday. And if you don't, make sure you do. And if you're loving it, head on over to iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to your podcast and leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. So that's all I got for you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.